Should the government cap foreign health workers? 0207 862 is the number that you need to give us a call. The business secretary, Kemi Badenoch, has suggested that limits on migrant health workers could be imposed, although she failed to give any details or make any confirmations. But here is Ms. Badenoch speaking to Asma Mir on Times Radio yesterday morning. It is not sustainable for us to have a healthcare service that relies uh, on migrants, especially if they're bringing in dependents. The net mm. benefit uh, becomes zero or less than zero. But we cannot allow a situation where we are unable to manage our borders just because of one sector. Now, this comes after record migration figures were published on Thursday, with net migration reaching 745,000 last year. The Minister for Immigration, Robert Jenrick, is now believed to be drawing up plans to cut the numbers. So, Belinda, should we be cutting numbers, and specifically at, in the health service, where it's about 19% of NHS workers are from outside of the UK? Uh, yes, I think we should be. This is no reflection on the health workers that come over here. I'm incredibly grateful. Anyone invited to work in the NHS from overseas, you know, thank you, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it's not great for a country to be so reliant on overseas labour. It makes a country quite vulnerable. I also think morally it's quite um, repugnant stripping poorer countries of their own health workforce. We are at the moment, what the West is doing is saying, you poor countries, you train them up for us because we can't be bothered to train our own British homegrown workers. We can't be bothered to invest in them. We'll throw them on the scrap heap and we'll nick yours. So we have situations across the world, for example, in Malawi, um, where over recent years their nursing staff has, has halved. And in one year it was down to a 360 nurses serving 12 million people because Western countries keep poaching health staff of poorer countries. So I actually think it's morally wrong to continue on that path mm -hmm. um, anyway. And I think it's morally wrong to desert the millions of workers in this country that could be trained up to work in our NHS. That's not to say I don't appreciate international workers coming in. The NHS has always had a great abundance of them coming in. In the 70s, it was 26% roughly for foreign doctors, but it's just reached too high. In fact, nurses, newly recruited nurses now are up to 50% recruited from abroad. That okay. is too high. Too high. Bobby, what do you think? OK, so I just want to caveat everything I'm about to say with the fact that I'm massively pro-immigration, but there's one thing I understand in 2023, and that is there is a social contract between all of us um, in terms of immigration. If a majority of people in this country are really worried about immigration, uh, it's, you know, on people like me to basically understand that and see where we can reduce some of those numbers. I think it's crazy to try and reduce those numbers in the health service. I totally understand what you're saying in terms of, well, what is our health service about if it's constructed around all of these foreign workers coming in? The point is, that's where we are. We know where the health service is right now in terms of it being running at 100%. It's, it's nowhere near that. I actually think what's happening here is, is people have a problem with immigration and you've got a government who want to show the people they're bringing the numbers down, but they're looking at the wrong place. Forget the NHS. If you look at student visas, last year, we had uh, 486,000 student visas given out. I want us to also be a place where people come to study. But at the moment, if you're a student, you can bring in your dependents. Mm. For me, I'm a traditionalist on the fact that, you know, like, don't get married, don't set up a home, get your studies done first. So I don't understand why last year there was, I think, something along the lines of 140,000 dependents coming in for students. I don't understand why dependents have to come along with students. It's madness. That's what I'm saying. Unless for that's where we should be. That's, yeah, unless it's research students or PhD, that's what I'm talking about, about the focus mm. being on the wrong place because if you so you think they should focus on students rather than focus on, on healthcare workers yeah. what about dependents for, yeah. for, for nhs workers because well, that's crazy two, two, 27,000 nigerians came over in the last year on social and health visas they brought in 47,000 dependents with them that's more more than you know we we can, it's more than that, sustainable so are you saying that if you want to be a social health care worker and let, let me just mm. remind everybody watching and and all of us here the the shortage on social care, not on the whole of the NHS, on just social care, social care is 165,000 
people we are short on. Now, taking away social care means that some people watching, people who are in hospital right now and don't need to be in hospital but could come out, they can't because there isn't enough social care there for them to be looked after. So what the government is proposing at the moment is to reduce those numbers. I make those vacancies even bigger. So we are telling people, the government's going to say to people, in order to get those immigration numbers down, we're going to take social care away from you. But why are you throwing Brits on the scrap heap? This is what I don't get. Oh, if we suddenly stop immigration, we're not going to have the jobs. We're have, not going to have the people. I don't what think I'm... they've thrown Brits on the no, scrap heap. No, I think they've given they've up. They've brought people in because no, I... Brits aren't at uh, the moment, at least. What? Don't, don't, so it's Brits' fault. No, I'm sorry. Labour and Tories have created a climate that is anti-work. They are paying people to stay at home. Mm -hmm. The benefit culture is out of control. There's no incentive. I, I think a lot of people, uh, uh, and I can tell you, just because we've done this recently on this very show, a lot of people would disagree with you there. Yeah. A lot of people call up and say, I'm holding two jobs, I'm on benefits, and I still can't afford to feed I, and clothe my family. I agree, but a lot of people a lot are of in people. work. I, I think the use of a lot, we have to be careful. Yes, there are some people who abuse the system, but the large majority are trying to make ends yeah, meet. I don't believe people working in the health service or people who could work in the health service are going, I could earn double or maybe even triple, but I'll just sit at home just mm. about eking out and scratching you've out. You've got living. cities like Manchester, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool and Glasgow where the workforce out of work on out of work benefits is nearing 20 but then do you have to ask why, though, don't yes. you? Because at the moment, we've got the largest waiting list on the NHS we've ever had. Are we considering that quite a few of those people who'd want to get back to work can't because they're waiting for treatment? Possibly. Right. I agree it's very complex, but I do think saying Brits aren't going to do the job, so we're not going to ask mm. them, we're going to uh, outsource, is also not a solution. I think I there needs saying, to be a balance. I wasn't saying Brits aren't going to do the jobs, therefore we'll keep you know, immigration constantly happening. I'm saying we're in a system because of the nuanced fact uh, is lots of Brits won't do that job, not because of benefits. They aren't, aren't, uh, people aren't Why? getting educated. Well, some people aren't getting educated enough. Some people want to do other jobs. Uh, it's, I don't think we're living in a situation where our government's turn around and gone, all these jobs could get taken, taken by Brits, but we're going to offer it to people overseas. Uh, here's, a, think... here's another thing that we need to actually be mindful of and be open about. If the visas, if these jobs are on the jobs shortage list of the government, so I've got it here, there's so many. We've got health services, public health managers, directors of all jobs, residential day and domiciliary care, so social care, that's on the shortage. That allows the employers to pay 20% less than the advertised job, than the minimum wage. So we are saying to employers, if you get workers on work visas on the shortest list, you can pay them 20% less. And I think it decentivizes. What, it, what, what incentive yeah. is there to offer good paid jobs in the social care sector so that yeah. British people might go, actually, I do want to do that job because it pays well. This is my point. There is no motivation for companies to train up, invest in a British workforce if they can get cheaper labour abroad. And, and it also means that the standards of working doesn't have to be that high because you've got nurses and doctors here not happy with the, with the conditions in the NHS, not happy with their salary. So instead of addressing them, we're just outsourcing and getting cheaper um, labour mm. abroad. That's not fair on the doctors and nurses here. We should be investing in them and making it a more appealing job and having more medical places at university for British students. That is a great answer and that's long-term planning, something all these politicians are really, really bad at at the moment, I'm just That has to start sometime. Yeah, no, of course. I'm, 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 I'm very pro, pro, uh, I think it's wonderful. I'm very grateful for immigrants to coming here and helping with our health service, but it has to be a balance. We can't tilt the scales. So 50% of our nurses but, but, are now coming but, from overseas. But let's, let's, let's just quickly, so you don't, th you think, you support the government basically saying to people, people watching, that we're gonna reduce the amount of people working in social care. I think it, we should stop with the dependence of those coming over, okay. working in social, bar one. I think that's a good Tory policy. Um, but I, I also think the Conservatives need to wean uh, wean NHS off right. foreign labour in, in a time-limited way, not straight away. No. OK, let, let me, uh, let's find out what people are saying at home. Maria has got in touch with us from, from Hertfordshire. Maria, uh, good afternoon. What do you think of the government's decision? They want to cap the amount of people entering the country on health visas or on, uh, to work in the health department. Absolutely. They should definitely do that. 
I'll explain quickly. My son was in a situation where he had five A-levels at A-star, applied to study medicine last year, didn't get a place. And it wasn't just him. None of his counterparts got a place to study medicine um, because they're relying on these doctors coming from abroad. You know, we've got children here, students, Mm -hmm. willing, able and capable of, you know, studying medicine and becoming good doctors. Why are we not even giving them the opportunity? Okay, Maria, you make a very good point. It is also important to say that the government have pledged to increase the number of doctors uh, and medical staff they're going to be training in the future. So those places will be increased. Also, we should say it's incredibly expensive to train um, uh, doctors, but they are going to increase that, making the point that Belinda's saying. And I think we're all saying that we need to train more people in the UK to fill those jobs. But, Maria, you know, and I know, if your son, because uh, my daughter wants to do medicine as well, it takes a very long time. We are talking about now. We are talking about today. People watching this at home, needing social care, are basically being told by the government that next year we're going to have fewer people coming in to look after you, to perform social care, because we want to reduce immigration. So, Maria, what do you say to someone watching this who's going to lose their social care? Well, I think we should start exactly as you've been saying, let those people come. Right. We don't need the 47,000 dependents that come with them. Right. But, OK, so you're saying you can come and work in social care here, but you need to leave your family behind. Do you think people will still come? It's not a very well paid job. It's £26,000. Well, maybe you take younger people who haven't got a family. That's the issue. Maria, can I just quickly add? That's why I was talking about actually yes. focusing on dependence for students because those students are younger. Um, you've got to remember the parts of the world we're getting these people from, people do get married earlier as well. I'm thinking about you, Alexis. I'm thinking about you and myself. We all have families. What, what would we do if we got a really good job overseas and then that government said you can't bring your kids or you can't bring I think if it's a really partner? good job, 26,000 isn't a lot of money. It actually doesn't bring that much tax into us. So it's not massively beneficial tax-wise to us either. We're um, going to increase that anyway. Uh, yeah, that, which, is a good, which is a good thing because it has to work out. I'm just saying it's not good for a country to be so heavily dependent. What if there's another pandemic or a war that suddenly stops the flow of migrants coming here and we don't okay. have the nursing colleges or the infrastructure for training our owner. All right, uh, let's uh, just quickly squeeze another call. Val has called from the West Midlands. Val, good afternoon. What would you like to say? Oh, good afternoon. Um, by the government giving um, care agencies, etc., the powers to bring these people in mm. to do care work, they are charging them literally thirty, forty thousand pounds to get into the country. And once they get into the country, they are only offering them two three hours work per day, they cannot survive on that. And I think that's the thing that should be withdrawn. Anybody that wants to come in, they should only come in and apply through the government website. It should not be given out to other agencies or gang masters. OK, uh, thank you for the point there, Val. Uh, the, yes, you make a good point. There are a, a lot of people coming in, not via the government-sponsored schemes, and that's something that the government needs to address. Uh, look- 